What's up, guys, and welcome back to Beyond the Void Horror Podcast. That's right, we're back for episode 130, and this week we have an episode dedicated to the kids in the hole that Brittany came up with. I'm a genius. <laughs> we were going to call it Kids and Their Holes, but that sounded quite... That's what Alex wanted to call it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first thing that popped in my head, but yes, obviously. And I was like, No. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and veto that. (laughs) Vetoed. So why are we calling it The Kids in the Hole? Well, basically, we're going to be talking about two movies today that are dealing with kids that have holes Holes. in the movie, like giant holes that are, I don't know. There's creatures in these (laughs) holes. We're going to be talking about one, The Pit from 1981, and... The Hole in the Ground. That's what it's called, right? Right, from 2019. 2019, this year. So brand new movie and... An old movie that deal with kids in holes. And their holes. <laughs> Mon- demonetized. No, we don't even get monetized anyway, oh, so it doesn't matter. Lord. Um, but somebody's going to turn that around and like make us say we're, things. We're you know now. I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll have the source materials. So I can suck it. Uh, but anyway, guys, so I hope you had a great week this week. We're back. We're ready to drop some hot bombs on your face. And uh, did you do anything interesting? Um <laughs> Ready to squirt our fucking audio love raisin all over your mouth. <laughs> You're like, Jesus Christ, these guys are no, fucking God, childs. I'm turning it off. <laughs> They're children. Jesus. You're the worst. <laughs> You're the worst. I'm, yeah. You're hilarious. I, I seriously wonder if you guys get, like, offended by some of the dumb shit that we say. I'm sure they do. But you gotta remember, we're just kind of, like, improving it terribly. We're not, like, no, we're, some we're renowned fucking comedian or something. We're just, we're just a bunch of fucking idiots, I guess. We're both you know? 12-year-old children. Yeah, there you go. 12-year-old boys specifically is <laughs> what we are. Well, are, are you? I Basically. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I mean. I'm a well-developed 12-year-old boy, <laughs> I guess, that has boobs. I have gynecomastia. Yeah. Gynecomastia. That's, that's what it's called. When fucking, men have titties. That's like a $15 word right yeah. there. <laughs> I win. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to fucking top that shit. The word of the day shit. is gynecomastia. See, we always have some sort of medical interesting thing that Brittany uh, wants to bring up in here. Yeah. I know nothing of that. I, I, I just, uh, you know. I assisted on a fetal autopsy today. I saw not you Not today, post but about the other that. day. Yeah. yeah, that was Depressing? Sad. <laughs> yeah, it was. And then there was one today, too, and it looked like a fucking creepy little alien. Like, it was weird. That one wasn't sad? No, it was weird. Okay. Now I'm, like, desensitized entirely, because I'm like, see one, like... Right. That's it. Bag you know it I mean? and tag it. Get it the fuck out of here. Yeah, garbage. like, I don't know. It's just like, it was, what made it so sad was because it's it's wrapped up in a little blanket and then it's got clothes on. Uh, and like, we put like. Wait, they put clothes on it? Mm-hmm. What the fuck? Well, I mean, it was alive. It was a, oh. a living baby. Oh, I thought it was like just born. No, or this, like a, this a, one had been alive. I, like, pre-birth I, can't, or whatever. I can't get into too much detail about it, but this one had been alive for X amount of time. So oh, the one no. today was looking for like uh, uplifter for the week, guys. Yeah, the one today like died when it was born, so wow. it was and it was super premature, so it looked like a weird, preemie, creepy, um, undeveloped red alien. It was weird. Wow. So there's that. Um, yeah, I didn't do anything uh, nearly as entertaining as that. I guess you know. Yeah. As uplifting, <laughs> as you know? dissecting a baby. I just, uh, I just watched and. 
handed them something if they needed it. You always have so much more going on than I do. All I do is just sit behind the computer and do things all the time, pretty much. <laughs> that and I watch a few extra movies on the side. I think I watched, um, what did I watch? It's because I'm in medicine, that's why. Like, so I try to watch, like, stuff that's not horror related so right. that I feel like I'm not wasting it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so like I've been watching a lot of Doctor Who lately, like the original Doctor Who from like the first season, which there's like 51 episodes missing or something like that. But I was just interested because I would like to know where it all came from. Right. So we got this Brit box thing on fucking Amazon. Oh, yeah, that's a thing. Right. And we pay, I think it's like six bucks a month and I can watch as many of all the Doctor Who episodes all the way up until something. Nice. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch it. I'm going to go through the whole fucking thing. It's probably podcast worthy, but I don't know if I would have that much time to just sit there and do every single episode. And I'm sure somebody out there's already coined the name WhoCast. You know what I mean? Oh, so, yeah, I'm sure. But anyway, so yeah, I've been watching that uh, every morning this week. Our dog got fucking poked in the eye or something. I know. Murray got poked in the eye, so we had to fucking, like, he came home, he laid down, he, we got him, like, grooming and everything, he got his butthole leaked and, like, fucking <laughs> his teeth brushed and fucking finger prodded and banged. His butthole um, But yeah, like, he, he basically got the whole work set, and we were really happy to see him, you know, we're like, oh, you're so cute! And then he laid down because he was exhausted, and as soon as he, he woke up, I saw his eye was all, like, closed, and I was like, oh, shit, that's not good. So we waited like an hour to see if it was allergy related. Nothing. Fuck it. I was like, we're going to the vet. Fuck this. So we went to the vet. Sure enough, there was an ulcer, cornea ulcer of some sort that brushed his eye somehow. And I don't know how he did it or how it happened. Everybody was like, hang the fucking, you know, go out there and hang the fucking groomers and stuff. And I'm like, well, I'm sure they didn't do it on purpose. Right. Like, you know, it's I'm like, what am I going to do? Charge them for it? So $200 later, we figured out, you know, they they did the eye dye on his eye to see if there was any abrasion. And sure enough, it was like right there. Aww. So every day, twice a day, we put this ointment on the, on the, just on the lid. Yes, yeah, so he blinks it in. So he blinks it in, right? You can't just put it on the eye, of yeah, course, but it's this <laughs> ointment. And then, uh, I've been waking up at four in the morning, three hours before I, like three to four hours before I usually get up. So it's been kind of a, I've been tired as fuck, dude. <laughs> so we've been doing that twice. Once at night, once in the morning, and we got five more fucking days of that. <laughs> but he's doing better, guys. So if you're worried, he's all right. He's cute. He's a good boy. He's got a cone and a donut on right now. Yeah, he's the got greatest shit in the world. <laughs> he's got a donut. Like, there's this Zen pillow. It's called a Zen pillow that you put around your dog's neck. It's supposed to replace the the cone. Well, he's too good and can scratch his face from any angle because he's tiny and then he just fucking gets around it so we have to put the cone and the fucking pillow around his neck he looks like he's like either going to war or trying to pick up some signal from fucking outer space he's space dog yeah but he's, he's fine. he seems like he's in good spirits i just feel like we're torturing him yeah, you know he's fine he's I was like let me put this weird shit in your eye and it itches i know but you can't scratch it and here's this fucking cone and this pillow and everything else you fucking piece of shit <laughs> anyway so that's what i've been doing guys yeah no more in, no infant uh cutting up or anything like that you know <laughs> you always gotta show me up Brittany. i'm well, just kidding you know <laughs> medicine I think it might be that time, guys. Aw, oh, shit! Horror shots! So, guys, today we watched, you know, we wa we have a couple movies that we were going to be talking about. One of them is The Pit from 1981. And in the movie, there's this kid who's, like, kind of a bad kid. And, like, you can tell there's, like, something off about him. I wouldn't say that there's, like, he's mentally something or whatever it is. But he, he definitely, he doesn't fit in with anybody. He's a weird boy. So, so he has this imaginary, well, not imaginary, he technically has a teddy bear who he talks to, and the teddy bear tells him to do naughty things, like murder people. Uh, so we decided that we're going to make a shot called Bad Teddy. And it's... <laughs> so it's in honor of The Pit from 1981. The ingredients are two parts rum chata, one part gold schlager, and one part vanilla whipped cream vodka. 
all in a shaker with ice. And then you're going to take some cinnamon toast crunch, crush it up into a fine powder, pretty much, as much as you can. Cocaine dust. Yeah, because you don't want to choke on like... You're going to snort it. Yeah, you're going to snort some cinnamon... Shoot it like a line of coke and not be a (laughs) pussy. (laughs) But yeah, you put basically cinnamon toast crunch on top, you slam it, and then that's your teddy. That's your bad teddy, motherfuckers. So it it sounds delicious, actually. And I tried. I tried the shots from last week. Christina's been bringing on shots during the stream that I do every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, guys. And like on Wednesday, she comes through and we do the shots. She wants to do that every week. And I'm like, that's pretty expensive after a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we did the shot from last week, the milk foot, and it's really fucking good. So if you guys haven't tried it, you really should. We don't just make shitty shots here. We're fucking professionals. Okay. They don't always make. No. Shitty shots. No, we make good shots, period. Okay. There is no, you know, I mean, extra information other than you've had amazing some of them shots. That we've made. They're just gross. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany, they're all amazing. They're all made with love. Okay. If you guys would love to try a bad teddy, all you have to do is go to longlivethevoid.com and check out our hashtag horror shot section now. Well, that's it for horror shots. Horror shots! So now we're going to go ahead and do something we haven't done in a while. And that's something that uh, some of you guys actually enjoy. And I apologize for not bringing it back. But today I spent some extra time whittling it down to five lucky contestants for the fucking news. Here is the fucking news. So, in the news this past week, we found some pretty good stuff, man. Um, One of them is they're going to be having the 40th anniversary of Alien, the franchise. And uh, the one one of the ways that they're going to be celebrating it, they had a contest for everybody to to submit a five-minute screenplay for a short. And if theirs was picked, they would be able to direct a fucking short with Alien in it. Neat. And and do whatever the hell they wanted. So they picked, I think it was like five of them. And it's going to be coming out. The shorts are finally coming. It's March 29th, every Friday through IGN, which is kind of weird that starting they're doing it March through. March 20th? March 29th. 29th. Yeah. I was like, starting on my birthday. So the shorts, they're, they're called, one of them's called Alone, Containment, Harvest, Night Shift, and Specimen. So it looks like they did six. So they're going to be coming out every single Friday after March 29th, guys. Mark your calendars. Cool. Uh, I'm not a big fan of IGN necessarily, but I guess, you know, they're big entities. So yeah, they were like, how do we reach geek fandom? You know, but here we do it. This is how. Right. I don't know why they didn't hit up like one of the I don't know. Maybe (laughs) I don't know why they didn't. But either way, guys, are you excited to see? And I, I definitely am. I'm sure there's going to be some good ones in there out of the six. I, you know, it's, it's, it's like a cream dream. They had like over 550 <laughs> fucking contestants and like six people got picked. So, or no, I think it's five people got picked and they do one themselves. So I think they funded one five minute one as well. So I'm kind of curious to see what it looks like. You know, I'm sure they're not going to be like the fucking movies. But, it, you know, if you're a fan of the fucking genre of the space alien fucking movies, you should fucking be enjoying it. So, yeah, it sounds cool. I think so. Also, in the news, we've got uh, a new sh- animated series that's headed to Netflix. It's coming. And guess who's in it? Well, first of all, it's called The Last Kids on Earth. It's a zombie show, by the way, animated with young kids. They have Mark Hamill. Rosario Dawson, Catherine O'Hara, and none other than Bruce motherfucking Campbell. Yeah, yeah. There's a, a, a slew of other fucking people that are going to be in this, but it seems pretty interesting. The, the, the way they describe The Last Kids on Earth, it's basically a book 
that they're going to be turning into an animated series, by the way, guy says, I'm so pleased that the adventures of Jack Sullivan and his friends will continue to grow both on the page and now on the screen, said Brailler. I couldn't ask for better partners, Atomic Cartoons, Netflix and Penguin to help me share these stories. And I'm beyond excited to reveal the newest cover while announcing this incredible cast. Seeing these actors bring the characters to life is a dream come fucking true. I added the fucking, by the way, so... <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that's going to be coming sometime in the near future. doesn't say here exactly when, but they're working on it. So I'm sure we'll see it here in the future. Uh, some of the artwork looks pretty cool. So I wonder if it's going to be kind of like an anime style, but like, cool. I don't know. It's, uh, it looks pretty unique, but there's a link down below. If you want to take a look at some of the already done work, uh, it's a pretty new series, I guess. So it just got picked up. Are you guys excited about that? Are you excited that Bruce Campbell's doing something? Yes. Yes. The answer is yes. If you say otherwise, get out. But in other news, we did hear a while back about John Carpenter's Tales for a Halloween Night that sci-fi was going to be picking up. Well, just came out today, well, Thursday of last week for you guys, that it's been canceled. What? So, yeah, they canceled it. So one of my one of my buddies was like, yeah, now they're canceling sci-fi shows before they even air. Because <laughs> they've been on a slew of, yeah. of just canceling shit on sci-fi. So I don't know what the fuck is going on. I don't either. That's insane. But apparently the series is based on Carpenter's award-winning graphic novel anthology of stories where he brings together storytellers from the worlds of movies, novels, and comics for a collection of horror stories featuring graveyards, sunken ships, creepy crawlers, and of course, ghosts. But he was intending on directing at least the pilot episode of the series. But Sandy King breaks the bad news this week that the plug, for good reason, it seems, has been pulled. And this is what they said. Sci-Fi wanted tales for a Halloween night, but it quickly became evident that they just wanted the title. And I really saw a disaster on the horizon. So I went, no, 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 this is not a good idea. It was a greenlit series, but if it's not going to be something cool for the fans and for the eventual audience then i don't think it's a good idea to do it uh it said it's dead uh king confirmed i think we have a pretty good idea what our fans want to see it doesn't mean something can't be done but at its core the people we work with have to respect horror fans and respect the genre that's the core of it not just respect the fact that horror right now makes money which is kind of what a lot of the execs are doing right now. Right. They're like, wait, you got a horror screenplay? Which is kind of cool. It's kind of yeah. like the 80s was. They were like, wait, you got a screenplay? Let's, let's fucking do it. Right. But there's so many people doing it now. You're probably going to have uh, lower ex lower your expectations because they're like, can we make it quick, cheap, and then put it out there? It's horror. People like horror. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe another uh, place might pick it up. You know, I would say like, Shutter or something like that, but I don't know, man. Like you know, Shutter they've they've be been pulling a lot fit. of stuff. Look at that Billy uh, Joe Bob Briggs fucking TV show, basically that they're going to be doing. So that's pretty. That's a big step. So seeing them produce something on top of that, and then they're also doing Creep Show, right? So it's like you know, that's a lot. So I mean, I don't know what kind of money they're making, but you know, we can dream, can't we? I never read the novels, by the way, guys. So sound off in the comments if you have seen it. I would love to hear what you guys think about the uh, novels. Also in the news, we got George Pavlo, who was the director of Rawhead Rex, saying we might reboot Rawhead Rex that he had in an interview in the Dark Side magazine. So that's an interesting one. I don't think you've seen that, one, have you? I don't think I no. Dude, I bought yeah, it on Blu-ray no. because I was like, oh, dude, I got to get this. Because I remember when I was a kid seeing it on the fucking shelf, you know, the VHS or beta or whatever the fuck. And it was just such a cool cover. I was like, fuck, yeah. And honestly, we need to review it soon. But I would be OK with it. I was telling uh, one of my buddies, I was like, hey, I was like, if they don't have a fucking priest getting pissed on by Rawhead Brex, then I'll riot. Because <laughs> in the movie, spoiler alert, sorry, there's a priest that gets pissed on, and it's one of the weirdest fucking things in a movie I've ever seen. I will riot. <laughs> like, they don't show his dick and everything, but it is a full maximum stream onto a priest, and that's how he baptizes him. <laughs> I even wrote a rap track 
about this movie yep. using the song, guys. And I've been sitting on it for way too fucking long. So when I get it finished, we'll do a review of that movie and I will air it on YouTube or something like that. And you guys can check it out. A lot of people that have heard it that say they like it, but I'd be open to a fucking reboot. I mean, Rawhead Rex is pretty fucking ridiculous. I still like the movie. It's it's not good. It's <laughs> it's just one of those ones that, you know, as a child you remember, I guess. So what do you guys think, though? Do you think this is a good idea or a bad idea? Sound off in the comments below. Last but not least, we got some uh, more information on the new Nightbreed uh, uncut version that they're going to be having that no one's seen, by the way. No one's seen any of this footage. It's going to be called the Ultimate Cabal Cut. And we got a teaser for us to see, which shows some stuff. I don't remember if it was in the fucking movie or not, but it's still kind of exciting to see that it's going to be coming out Yeah, in 2019. There is no official date that I know of yet, at least not that I found. So if you guys know uh, about that other than us, then let us know. I'd be glad to hear it. But there's a link down below, guys, if you guys want to check it out. Are you a fan of Nightbreed? Yeah. So that'll be interesting. So it's just unreleased footage. No, yeah, there's like apparently a lot too. Hmm. So it's going to be like this mega ultimate cut. What I saw in the teaser is that, I don't know if you remember the movie, but in the basement where the Midian is, they have these creatures that were like rejects and they were not accepted by their god uh, when they spilled the whatever on them or whatever and baptized them. And they turn into these hulking beasts that would just like kill them or anything. And so they chain them up in the basement and in the end of the movie, they, of course, you know, somehow get free. I won't say how. Um, and they showed a lot more footage of the creature. So, oh, okay. Might be kind of cool. Uh, I didn't see anything, any creatures that I hadn't seen before, but that would be cool too. Right. Because there's a lot of creatures in that movie, guys. Show me all the things. Show me all your creatures. Flap your creature at me, daddy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway. Ew. But that <laughs> is it for the fucking news. All right, guys, so now we're going to go ahead and jump into our flesh and potatoes of this week's episode called The Kids in the Hole. (laughs) Clever, Brittany. I'm so smart. (laughs) Two movies, The Pit from 1981 and, of course... The Hole in the Ground from 2019. All right, we're going to go ahead and do that right now. All right, guys, in an effort to keep you we'll here more boring to the first. end of the episode, we're going to go <laughs> ahead and uh, do the old one first. So we're going to kick it off with The Pit from 1981. The story, a solitary and strange preteen boy wreaks revenge on his harassers when he makes a disturbing discovery in the depth of the forest. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like fun. Anyway, it's uh, directed and written by Lou Lehman, uh, who also wrote Phobia from 1980 and Killers of the Wild mm. from 1977, which is a killer whale movie, I guess. I looked. Oh. But yeah, that's about well, it. I looked. <laughs> huh? Was, sorry, my brain. Oh, sh- I looked. I looked it up. Screenplay is by Ian Stewart, who has actually only done a documentary about the Highland Regiments of Canada, and that's it. <laughs> Uh, but there is a really interesting interview for some of the trivia guys about him. So also the cast in this movie has Sammy Snyder's who plays Jamie, the annoying kid that you want to murder. Uh, he was in the TV series, Huckleberry Finn and his friends back in like 79, I guess it was very successful. It was like 26 episodes or something like that. He was also in a movie called the last chase. And that's about it. It also stars Jeannie Elias, who plays Sandy, uh, the babysitter slash home house sitter. Sure. But uh, she was in a movie called Deadline, also in Nomads, Teen Wolf cartoon series, 
the Super Mario Brothers Super Show TV series, the Adams Family Cartoon Kids Show, Aww. the Quack Pack, essentially a plethora of different kids shows, movies, and also games. So a lot of voice acting uh, since then, although she has written some stuff uh, too. Also stars Sonia Schmitz, who plays as Mrs. Lind, who was in the Videodrome movie, which is by David Cronenberg, one of my favorite movies, by the way. She played Bianca Oblivion, if that rings a bell for you guys. She was also in the TV movies of Tech War. And she's Laura's mother in American Gods. So, oh, my God. Right. How weird, right? That just started back up and I need to watch it. Right. There's also uh, Laura Press, who was Mrs. Benjamin. She was in a couple episodes of Goosebumps and uh, a movie, I think a TV movie called Beyond Behind the Red Door. But other than that, Brittany, what did you think of this masterwork? So it made me want to kick a child in a hole. <laughs> yeah. Which was cool. I don't know. I kind of wish I had to, like a giant hole filled with monsters that was, you know, off the woods somewhere and my <laughs> where I lived that I could kick people I didn't like into. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Pretty fucking awesome. It, it's a weird. It's a weird movie. I yeah. didn't put it that way. It's it's weird. Um, it's original. I'll give you that. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen a movie like this before. So right. and any. I don't. I haven't really seen anything like it since, to be honest. I could like, probably compare it to like The Gate. Yeah, maybe. But you know what I mean, in in in, uh, I don't know. And obviously, the two that we're doing today are kind of similar to each other in some right. ways too. So yeah, but it's pretty original on its own. It's it's a unique movie. It's not great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's just not. The kids are really fucking annoying. The other kids are really annoying. Like everybody who in this is in this movie is annoying. Just put it that way. You kind of want to punch everybody in the face. But at the same time, you have to appreciate it for the fact that it it was a pretty original idea at the time when they released it. And it still is a pretty original fucking idea now. Well, especially Um, for its time. Yeah. Like, it's kind of ahead of its time. It is ahead of its time. And, you know, I don't know. Mouse thought it felt 70s. Like, he was guessing 70s. And I was like... Close enough. It's right on the cusp. So, so they probably started filming it at the end of you know late seventy nine, maybe early eighties, but released in eighty one. Right. Well, they probably used a lot of the same techniques that they were using in the seventies. So yeah, absolutely. It's not a big, it's not a big time jump there. So, mm-hmm. um, I don't know. Like I, I, I expected to hate it, and I didn't. Okay. Which is, I didn't like it either. But I mean, I didn't hate it, so that's pretty cool. Because you know, typically when we do. <laughs> older movies right i'm like cursing you silently or out loud right a lot yeah. of the time i'm not gonna lie it's out loud most fucking of the time alex I'm like i fucking hate you <laughs> um no it was fine it wasn't that bad because i thought it was interesting so i like the little creatures i don't really understand what they're supposed to be mm, i'll get into that i just wanted to kill that kid and i was kind of happy at the end so what did you what do you think uh you would give it a score of um for this like 80s style movie or? like maybe like a Four and a half. Okay. I mean, that's 10, fair. I think. Like, I think that's okay. Okay. Maybe, maybe four and a half out of ten. Yeah. That's good. I don't know. I try and compare it to, like, some other older movies or just other movies in general, terrible films that I've watched, and this doesn't really equate to a terrible film, so I feel like giving it a four and a half is kind of mean, but okay. at the same time, like, do I ever want to watch this again? No. Because it's a weird, like, coming of age type, like, ugh, boyhood, like puberty movie at the same time as it is this weird like monsters in a hole take care of your bullies by killing them movie like i don't know it's it's a weird con like it i don't know strange the story goes a lot of different ways but i think a lot of the pitfalls that you have with this movie um the trivia might help explain probably like what the writer felt because it's really interesting uh some of the stuff that he was talking about and he was pretty open about it too which Which was like awesome i think so too like i mean he's like too old to give a shit about that kind of stuff anyway i I hate when people hold on to shit like they are gonna keep a secret forever about something i'm like why you've already released it you've you've done the thing tell me what you were fucking thinking when you did this movie right like stop holding shit back well, originally, the sc- the screenplay was done by Ian A. Stewart, who has only done the documentary I mentioned. Teddy uh, was a like a, a story that was written by John Galt, and it was a novel, and they turned it into a film sort of idea from 1980. 
So it was okay. So it was actually a book that probably no one gave a shit about. Probably back then. This to me is kind of like one of those oddball Canadian. It's a, considered a Canuck exploitation film. <clears throat> Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the greatest word ever. I can exploitation. Yeah, I love it so much. But it's is you that know like Canadian exploitation. Is basically, that they call them Canucks. Canucks. But it's a Canuck exploitation film. I and, love Canadians so much. <laughs> but I think the concept is much. It's it's a. I think it's a cool film in the sense yeah. of the concept. I agree with you. Yeah, and I think that you know you you hope that it delivers a little bit more. I think. Just knowing the concept going into it, then I think that it actually delivers on. It's still a decent film, but it does feel a little bit older than most 80s flicks. Like, like Mouse said, you know, he felt like it was a 70s movie. Mm-hmm. And it does have that sort of 70s TV or TV yeah, show, really does. you know, feel to it. It feels like a TV movie is kind of what it feels more like to me than anything. But then right. it gets weird and then you're like, no, this is Well, the exploitative movie. factor in it is that it is technically has a lot of nudity. Right. And you're dealing with kids. So it's yeah, kind it's of an exploitation weird. thing right there. Plus creatures, of course. Uh, but you'd think that a movie that has the balls to make a story about a kid who has an evil teddy bear that makes him do bad shit and a pit full of creatures that feeds on humans would go ham on the screen. But it sort of is kind of tame. It is, which is surprising. You know, there's a lot there to work with, and it stays kind. Of, which at the same time, I kind of appreciate, to be honest, because I feel like they could have made gone this too far, way fucking stupid. Well, you know what I mean, the writer, and I'll get into this a little bit more, felt that they went too far on this one, even. But I feel like it never fully unleashed the story that perhaps I wanted to have in my mind and what I was, you know, what I remember. Because I haven't seen this since I was a kid. I yeah. remember the cover and I remember, you know, like, I don't know. I can't remember if my dad owned it or we rented it. For, like, I think we had it on beta. That's how old I am. Yeah, the cover's creepy. Um, I don't know. It just, you know, still there's something odd and decent about the movie once you lower your expectations a bit. Plus... You know, I hate to say it, but this is the kind of movie that you remake. Yeah. Honestly, I think that this is a open territory fucking film to make. I could see like a darker version made of this. And I mean, the concept is cool and weird enough. This could be really cool. Yeah. Like they could like trim it up and like make it a little bit darker. And I think it could be like a good nowadays film, you know, and I know a lot of people hate remakes, but personally, I don't think this is. I don't think people would know about this movie enough to even know. (laughs) Yeah. Well, there is a cult following, but it is rather small. So this was a Kino Lorber release release uh, that I picked up um, for on Amazon or whatever. They've been putting out a lot of, you know, they just put out the cover and then they put the disc and the disc didn't even look like it had art on it. But whatever. But, um, you know, there is some blood in this uh, movie, but it's it's not like a practical effects like thing i mean you have your creatures and suits and stuff like people in suits basically it's mostly just chunks of stuff with blood in the mouths of dudes in rubber furry creature suits basically (laughs) but which looks okay it's a little more fascinating to see their eyes glow and in the shadows than up close and personal but they get the job done you know i have no complaints with it it's fine you know, as far as the music goes, and this is where I really kind of got weirded out. It's totally all over the fucking yes. place for me. It does not make any sense. The whole time I just kept thinking to myself that this is a really odd choice for music to be having in this kind of horror movie. Almost as if the people who made it were thinking, let's make a fancy picture film about a zany kid and his teddy bear and some creatures. You know what I mean? Like... But it's it's not really that tone if you yeah. watch it. It's supposed to be lighthearted, so they probably instructed him to make it that way. I don't know. It's just kind of like they have like that semi sort of orchestral work that they would do for a big budget film. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they even talk about it. They like had some extras and I'll just mention it now because it's I watched the whole thing and uh, it's actually Victor Davies who did the sound work on this and like the way he was talking about it was really cool and everything. So, you know, they wanted to kind of make it this sort of fun and like lighthearted kind of thing. So 
it just felt weird to me. Like it was like kind of like a funny comedy style TV movie feel like Lassie or some shit. Like you ever watch old episodes of Lassie when you were a kid, like on Nickelodeon or something? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Do you know what I mean? Like I just kept thinking, man, wouldn't it be cool if they had made it really dark or like some sort of like, what would it sound yeah, like, like? That weird like circusy type zany music takes you out of the moment it really does and because it's really and then it's like oh it's so fucking loud too and unnecessarily like it's not they don't have the sound under control well they got like with those things tubas and like like stupid shit but don't get me wrong i mean the guy victor davies who composed the music is really good at what he does he's got he does good work it's just not my particular style what i would want to see in this movie right granted it's an older movie so it's not like i'm talking about a 2019 film here yeah you know it would have been really weird to hear that in a movie like that today (laughs) i know right (laughs) but like why but overall i honestly think it's a decent film to watch if you like weird stuff but i think it would be a very average or below film for most people yeah i agree it has kind of a batshit concept like I mentioned, it just never let go, never let loose on the fucking screen. But, you know, it never really, it just feels like it just never really carves its way and unleashes that fury. And I want to see that on the screen, which I really wish it had, but I still own it for a reason because it's an odd cult film that sometimes I'll come back to and watch. It's quirky. It's kind of creepy, slightly above average. I'd say like a 5.5. Maybe a six if if you're into that kind of stuff, it might push it up a little higher. So there's there's a pretty decent cult following for this film. Yeah, so. I can see that. But yeah, I wouldn't say this is for everybody. This is for kind of I wouldn't say it's like you got to be a diehard, tryhard fucking you know horror fan to really appreciate that. I'm not like that. It's not a. It's not one of those so bad it's good films. It's just so bad it's just kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of tame, dude. Like it feels like you're watching a TV movie, yeah. and then you're like, oh shit, there's tits in it. Exactly. Like what the fuck? And like there's kids. Like so it's a little weird. Like they don't go overboard with it. It's just really quick stuff. It is. Although they do zero in on a nipple <laughs> at one part in the movie, but but yeah. So we're not too far Boys off. I say nipples. five point five ish you know it's above average i will watch it again you know i i just think it's crazy to think about this kid who's being commanded by some teddy bear and really there's a more mundane reason why he's talking to the teddy bear that's more psychological and i'll get into that yeah in the trivia now so but what did you guys think have you seen this movie like do you like this movie are we fucking wrong like (laughs) all the way I mean, totally cool, man. Like, if it's for you, I'm all about it. Are we fucking wrong? (laughs) I would definitely watch it again. I mean, I bought it. I remember it as a child. I don't remember everything about it. I just remember the one scene with the the old lady in the wheelchair (laughs) and him, but which we'll talk about later. Uh, You laugh so hard. Some of the trivia, and this is going to get kind of spoilerific for you that may or may not want to hear this. You might want to skip out on this. I'll put the timestamp below so you know when to join back in for the next movie. Uh, and I'll put all the timestamps in for all of our movies and everything that we do from here on out. So don't worry. I've been doing that each week, but I'm going to get more specific about it. But this is, like I mentioned, a Canadian film. And although it was shot in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, though... It was also shot in Toronto. So they did two different places. I guess it was just cheaper back then. They had enough money, I guess, to do it. Oh, Canada. No, Canada. (laughs) There was an interview with Sammy Snyder, who plays Jamie. And he was a hyperactive child he was talking about. Like, really. Like, one of those kids that you you put into sports because they were too hyperactive. Like my parents did it for me. They were like, put them in everything you can. Soccer, T-ball, basketball, football, whatever the fuck you got to put them in. Oh, make him run. (laughs) Yeah. And I hated all the, I hated it. Um, But they put him into sports and they also put him into dance on top of it. So he would play sports and then he would also do the dance at, uh, in the evenings or whatever. So, Apparently, he landed a few jobs in like commercials and TV and acting after that. And he practiced his lines with his mom every single night when he was nice. at when he was shooting. You know what I mean? Um, he was about 14 years old. They said he was 14, even though he played a 12 year old, technically, which isn't that far off, really. No. 
you know, two years for a 14 year old, they grow pretty quick after that. Right. Uh, he actually decided that he wants to go back to his roots and that dance has always been kind of like his thing. And so now he's actually teaching kids to dance. And the way he described it is that because he did dance, he got opportunities to do stuff in acting and he wants to afford children and teach them, uh, you know, that dance can open up new doors for them for whatever they want to do. So he's a big fan of that. So. Um, in the movie, they call these creatures, by the way, trollologs. That's what fucking Jamie calls them. But they're actually, in fact, called troglodytes, which are technically like half man, half ape, caveman type things. That's what troglodytes are. Like there was a movie called Trog back in the day, which was about an old caveman and stuff. Like mm. a, So basically, Jamie being a kid didn't say it properly. In fact, it was in the book, the novel. Uh, as I think Trollides. So, but, um, Ian Stewart, who actually translated the novel into a screenplay and changed some things, said that he came up with the, I or that they came up with the idea from a buddy of his who was a famous leading ventriloquist performer. So he actually was a, That's you cool. know, yeah, he did a lot of ventriloquist stuff. Like he did like conventions and like he was a huge, big, ventriloquist one of the most famous ventriloquists apparently and uh he also worked with autistic children on the side as something that he would do he would actually have the children who would talk to the dummy instead of an adult as a means for them to communicate without feeling the pressure of talking to an adult that's cool it's just kind of helped them cope with things. But he said that he had also another friend who was a child psychiatrist and he would go to him to get ideas on how the, the mental, you know, mind is and like how people react to certain ways and get kind of ideas for him to flesh out uh, stories and stuff like that. And he said that his friend told him about a kid who was about eight or nine years old. And this is kind of creepy. The kid would draw like these really creepy characters that apparently these were really good drawings. Like the kid was a natural, uh, but he had, you know, some really heavy mental problems. He would basically, if someone treated him poorly or upset him or harmed him or anything, he would, in his mind, send these creatures that he drew after them to kill them. And they would no longer exist. Even though the creatures didn't kill them, he, if they walked up to him and tried to talk to this eight year or nine year old kid, he would just ignore them and act like they didn't exist because the trollodies would kill them. That's what he called them. So I thought that was really interesting. It was like this troubled kid called the creatures troglodies. That's what it is. So I don't know. Ian, the writer, married these ideas sort of together. Yeah. And came up with Teddy. And also, you know, as the ventriloquist dummy sort of thing, mm -hmm. even though it's not a ventriloquist doll, it's a teddy bear that he talks to. And he said he married these ideas together for what he calls the demon child genre, like the omen and stuff like that into the character Jamie. And the story was originally called, of course, Teddy. So I don't know. I thought it was kind of interesting that he like that there was a kid that actually did that. Like, can that you is, imagine? Yeah. That's totally like something I would want to write. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They did try to find kids who were about eight or nine to act in the part of Jamie, actually, because that's what the novel did and that's what the screenplay was all about. And they whittled it down to about five kids who were all capable of doing really good acting at eight or nine years old. But I guess the director didn't even want to see them. He just blew them off. Just Why? blew them off <laughs> and picked Sammy Snyder. Like, out of the blue, he's like, I already got these thing. And Ian, you could tell that he was a little upset about this because he was like, all these kids, like, came back, like, after numerous auditions, and you didn't even look at them. And then you picked this 14-year-old kid who's playing a 12-year-old, I guess. Yeah. He said that it was really odd because the sexual nature, there, he was too old to not have some sort of idea about sexuality in some degree yeah that it turned it into something weirder than it was meant to be where it's this harmless little eight or nine year old who you know what i mean that yes. is teddy talks to him and all this other shit so he wasn't too happy about it he just didn't like the whole sexual interest thing that they had going on like some of that stuff was in there but it, he felt like it would have had a much more impact if it was an eight or nine year old which i kind of agree in a way yeah i do too 
the director had Ian actually also shoot a lot of the nude scenes, by the way, in the film because his wife, the director's wife, Lee, Mrs. Lehman, I guess, didn't want him to shoot any scenes like this. So Ian, the writer, actually shot them for him. So it's kind of weird, you know, one of the nude scenes in the movie was from another female with the last name Lehman. And I looked yeah. at, I looked it up. She was swimming in this one part at the very end towards the end or whatever. And she just went completely topless. And that's his daughter, I guess the director's daughter. So it's weird that he cast her in this role. It is weird. Like, it's weird to me. Yeah. No, that is weird. <laughs> It's like one thing if they're going off to do another movie is somebody else. I don't know. There's something weird about that. But I guess he didn't film it himself. He just had Ian do it. So you know, nothing like a stranger ordering a stranger to shoot your daughter naked, I guess. Uh, he still has to see it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, another thing I found out, too, is that the trial logs that they call the troglodyte people, the creatures, they it's really kind of hard to tell how tall they are. Or how big the hole is even right. in this movie. So you can't really tell if they're like full grown adults, but it technically they had kids that were five years old who were playing five and six, they said, who were playing the trollologs. Mm -hmm. And they had them originally. She like, um, Elias, what's her name? Jeannie. Yeah. Jeannie Elias said that she saw like five kids walking by and she was like, what are these kids doing here? And he was like, Oh, <laughs> those are the trollologs. What are these kids doing here? <laughs> Where are they going? <laughs> but it's funny too because like the kids all got sick from being in the suits for so long that they would they got sick and puked in the masks oh and stuff. God. So they had to like ship the kids back home and then they they hired little people to come fill the role, I guess. So <laughs> it's kind of weird that you're making like a five year old kid like put meat in their mouth and stuff. Yeah, a little bit. I don't know. What did you did you like the creatures it's like a weird in there? Turn. <laughs> did you think they looked stupid or? Turn. Um, I didn't think they were stupid. I thought they like were interesting. I liked them in the hole. Yeah, it's like I said, it's better at a glance than up close. Yeah, like seeing their eyes glow, looking up out of that's the hole was cool. really cool. Uh, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I got for the uh, trivia here. But I thought it was some interesting stuff in there that they talked about. I didn't pull everything. Mm -hmm. Just some of the stuff I thought was interesting. But did you have any uh, scenes that stuck out you know, for you? He, I love when he rolls the old lady into the hole. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. I don't know why. Like, I don't remember that old lady being mean to him, but apparently she's a bitch. So. She ran into him in the beginning, in oh, the very beginning of the movie. With her he, wheelchair? Yeah. Oh. She's like, move, get out of the way. There's like three old ladies and oh. one of them's on a one of those electronic uh, wheelchairs. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think I'd roll an old lady into the ditch for that, but whatever. <laughs> it's fine, I guess. It was hilarious. So, yeah. It, and then that stupid girl, too. <laughs> oh, that he pushes in as well. She's annoying as fuck, too. So I was like, hey, he, you know what? He's just taking out annoying people. Well, he pushed a lot of people into that hole. Um, I know. I lost track of like who he was pushing. I'm like, who the fuck is that dude? Yeah, there was a couple of weird scenes in the movie, too, where, like, so Jamie's this, like, troubled kid, right? So he's, like, always getting into trouble. He's always looking at nudie magazines. He's always trying to, like, you know, send letters to his fucking librarian, fucking Mrs. Livingston or whatever. <laughs> and there's this part where he has this recording of him, of his Teddy's voice. Oh, my God. Yeah. Telling on a tape machine, and he puts... He, like, records all this stuff, sets up the fucking um, payphone. If you guys don't know what a payphone is, there used to be these boxes where people could call, put a quarter in, or 10 cents, or even 5 cents to make a phone call instead of using their cell phones. Um, <laughs> but anyway, he was on a telephone, like, on a, on a, like, one of those ones, and he sets up this tape recorder and plays it to the librarian who has a niece who keeps picking on him. And then he's like demanding her to undress in front of the window or they're going to kidnap or they're going to kill his, her niece. Yeah. They pretend like they already kidnapped her. Yeah. He pretends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is really weird. And so Jamie goes over to the window and sees her in a robe and he's like, I see you in your window. I need you to undress or something essentially alluding to it. She's like, is this what you want? She takes her top off and he takes a couple of pictures from outside the window. With a Polaroid camera, which yeah. would flash. Or I mean, something. 
I mean, how does she not see him? That I didn't understand at all. I mean, I guess it didn't matter. She just knew he was outside, I guess. Yeah, who knows? Either so way. you could very clear as day see that kid through that window. So But I'm thinking to myself, like, yeah, I can kind of see where they're talking about where it's an older kid, it makes it a little weirder. It's weird no matter what. Right, but it's not it's a little more sexually energized. Yeah, it's more like he's gonna fucking kill this chick. Yeah, I don't know. Something like it's a sexual predator type thing. They might have changed that around. They didn't say anything about that, but his Teddy and him are like, uh, there was this one scene though, also right before he starts pushing everybody in, mm-hmm. where he's like feeding the trollologs. He can't figure out how to feed them, what to feed them, and he finally gets meat. And he and he's like basically stealing money from his babysitter because his parents left to go out of town. They hire this girl Sandy to basically watch over him while they're gone. And he's like feeding the trolley logs and he runs out of money and he's like the Teddy's like, well, how much money do you have left? He's like, oh, I don't have anything. So he's like, well, why not feed the people to them that have treated you bad, essentially? Mm -hmm. And he's like, Teddy, you're such a good friend. (laughs) (laughs) So first, Jamie takes the girl who picked on him, the librarian's niece, and pushes her in. Then he takes the old lady to the pit. Do you want to describe that little scene there? He basically just rolls her, like, through the forest and shit. Like, she's screaming the whole <laughs> she's time. She's screaming, and it's so irritating. And the music's all like... Dun, 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 yeah. It's like, what? It's the weirdest shit ever. And he just, like, like, shoves, like, pushes her off the wheelchair into this hole. <laughs> and then he, like, rolls out of the forest in On the wheelchair. wheelchair yeah, I'm he's like, like wee! What the fuck? It's great. <laughs> the, the music was so weird and whimsical during that while she's screaming. It was. Just plops her in. Boop. And then he says, he's like, sorry about that, Mrs. Livingston, or whatever their fucking name was. Mrs. Benjamin. That's what I think it was. I don't know. He's like, he's like, like my dad says, we all have to go sometime. And then the music's in the moment. It's like, oh, silly. It just feels really weird. It's weird. But, um, and then he also throws in his babysitter's boyfriend who's like this football star yeah, who, at college. How that idiot doesn't see the giant hole he's about to run into. Is Ever, how me. anybody doesn't see it. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, it makes sense on the other two, but with the dude that he throws the football to, you don't right. see a giant hole you're about to run into? Well, yeah, because in the very beginning of the movie, they also had that bully, too. He's like, oh, it's in the jewels over there. And it's nighttime. That would have been the perfect time to run over into the hole. Yeah. But the kid goes around the hole and then opens the jewels. And he's like, because cause they, it's really confusing in the very beginning, by it the is. way. Because they just flash to, like, him in a ghost suit with it over his head. And he's talking to this guy. And then he, he's like, who are you? And then Jamie's like, I'm Jamie. And then... They flash back to an earlier time where Jamie's getting picked on at school by this bully and punches him in the face for wanting to be a part of his club. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, but then they come and back they to that. revisit that scene again later. Like he throws the kid in the hole. And, right. And then like. The they, little girl that came with him. Yeah. And they come back to that like halfway through the movie. And I'm like, what the? I already saw this. Right. They play it play for play. What is happening? Right. And then it extends it out with the with the girl that was with him. Yeah. I don't understand this at all, but okay. Well, she like faints too. She like gets all scared and he's like, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry that I have to do this. You're pretty, but not inside. Don't pick on people. It hurts them. And then he like takes off her tutu, chucks her in as the creatures like roar and the music has like (laughs) horns blasting. And it's like, I don't know. It's silly. What was it? There was, do you have another scene? There's one thing I want to mention that I have a little bit of trivia that I attached to it. That's why do I it. ask. Do the thing. Um, I was like, I don't know. I don't think so. You don't have another scene that you liked? or Not that I can dig up right now. Okay. I write the second. Well, there is a scene where Jamie gets questioned by his babysitter uh, and uh, about her boyfriend and why he's missing. And he's like, is that supposed to be my fault? And this is kind of like a really weird part where like, I think that you know, Sammy Snyder, the, the, who's playing Jamie, did a really good job because he's like almost like totally like emotionless about it. And just like, what is that supposed to be my fault or something like that? And then she slaps him like across the face. And he's all like, he's like, you know, those people that have been missing. 
your boyfriend, you know, I know where they go. They get fed to the trolley logs. You know, that girl, the other girl name here and all those other people that are missing, they're being, they got fed to them. And she's like, she just kind of like the babysitter just kind of like blows it off. And then, and then she's like, I'm sorry, Jamie, you know, maybe I've been too harsh on you. And he's like, well, you don't believe me about the trolley logs. And she's like, actually, you know what? I do believe you. And he's like, really? And he's like, yeah. She's like, well, let me show you. And she's like, all right, only if you stop perving on me. Because throughout the movie, he's like writing, I love you on the mirror. She gives him a bath and he's like, it's all really weird it's and weird. sexual. The moment that she slapped him in this movie, by the way, was supposed to be a slap that even the stuff that happened after it in the movie was supposed to be kind of like a slap in his face that he all that it was all in his mind, apparently. In the original story. Okay. And that's how they were supposed to play it. That's what Ian, the uh, screenplay writer, said. He felt that it was a little bit more organic that way and more authentic. But, you know, horror made, like, with creatures and shit like that, made more money. So they just, you know, kind of made this thing. Even the producer of the film pulled in Ian one time and apologized to him and said, we took your great story and turned it into a really shitty grade B horror movie. I'm sorry. And that was it. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I get that like back then it was all in his head. But if they would have known that in the future that that shit would have been played out like a motherfucker, they probably wouldn't have been too happy about it. Yeah. And, and no one's going to care if that was the first one that did it or you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you've done it in like fucking... The Wizard of Oz has been done since back then, so it's not the first one, I guess. I haven't seen that shit in so long. But that's technically that's technically what happens. Like they kind of make you question whether it was all real. Mm. And you were there, and you were there. Bitch, you were high. <laughs> you high as fuck, high girl. As fuck. She was high on mushrooms. She was Where'd like, "You get your drugs from." I had to clean up your shit all over the fucking place, yeah, Dorothy. Like Alice from Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> Bitch is high too. But they kill the uh, they kill the uh, the babysitter, and that was kind of a cool death scene. I thought. Did you like that? Yeah. Because she's like screeching. It's like the first time that I felt a little uneasy about them dying. The other ones were just like plop. Yeah, just like me. But this this one is designed that way because it's supposed to because it makes him feel because it wasn't on purpose. Right. She slipped in. She got yeah. too close to the edge. He didn't want her to die. No, so because he loved like, her. Yeah. Now he's all tormented and shit because of it. He's a little emo kid now. And the, and the fucked up part is, is that, you know, that's when you get to see them put the meat in their mouths. Like, that's where it gets a little graphic. Not really. You don't see any, like, yeah. body parts coming off or anything like that. But their glowing eyes are really cool at that point, too. And she's, like, screaming to get out. And Jamie's all like, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And he runs home and cries on his teddy. He's like, And he's like, well, you didn't mean it, did you? And he's like, no, I didn't. She, I didn't push her. But anyway, so Jamie gets the fucking big bright idea to let the fucking trolley logs out <laughs> by throwing a fucking rope down there for them to climb out. What a fucking great idea, Jamie. Stupid. After he tells all the police and everything and his parents that the babysitter left, left with her boyfriend, boyfriend to cover his ass <laughs> and then blames it on the guy that she was dating on the side. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? So, I don't know, all the trolley logs just start wreaking havoc all over the fucking town and everybody's dying, <laughs> including the lake scene with the, the fucking swimmer girl, which was pretty cool. Shows them kind of biting on her flesh a little bit, but nothing, with, yeah. you know, no practical effects, really. Yeah, this isn't like a... It's like 50s style or 60s style. Right. This isn't like a gory movie. Guys, no. So, don't think it is. Another really cool scene that I thought was cool is when they shoot the fuck out of the... Because, like, they, they find the trolley logs... They go after them and the like whole town's like packing fucking heat and like guns <laughs> and shit. And they're like hunting down the th which they think they're pigs. What do they call them? Some then they blame it all on like wild dogs or something. Yeah, like, like that. wild dogs or some shit like that. I'm like, uh, no, they don't walk upright. Okay. Right. Uh, they're walking around on both fucking two fucking hind legs. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. But they, the, the trial logs go back to their hole because they think, oh, well, that's a safe place to hide. And then they just shoot the fuck out of them in the fucking hole. <laughs> it's a 
shooting fish in a barrel. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of cool. And they just like, you know, they show a lot of that's like practical effects because they show the squibs blowing up on their chest. Yeah. I think. I don't remember. I don't either. Uh, but I know there was a lot of blood. I don't remember that part. Right. In particular. Jamie, of course, goes to the grandparents' house after this. Yeah, I like the end. <laughs> like, there's a background story, by the way, and this is for, for those of you that don't haven't seen the movie and you don't want the end spoiled, you probably don't want to listen to this part, but basically he gets sent to his grandparents' house to stay and I'm a, because his parents can't handle him. The backstory guess, is yeah. his parents couldn't handle him and they sent him to a, a, a place to get medical help and then he ended up with his grandparents. That's what the, the background story that Ian was talking about. But there's a girl there and who asks him to play like right off the bat. And it's like, finally, Jamie has a friend <laughs> and they go running off through the fields and uh, happen upon, you guessed it, another hole in the ground. I think it was the same hole, by the way. Bitch has her own trolley logs. Yeah. She shoves that motherfucker right in the hole. <laughs> right. He's all like, he's all like, he sees the hole and he's like, oh, shit. Shit. <laughs> Like, that's a trollog hole or trollog pig. And she's like, yeah, I know. And just pushes the motherfucker <laughs> in. It's like, you get what you fuck. You reap what you sow, motherfucker. That was fucking so ridiculously hilarious. I, I kind of like that I ending, like, I love though. it. It kind of wraps it up nicer. It's fine. It, it just it ends. Right. And then it's over. So I'm like, cool. I mean, overall. <laughs> no sequels. <laughs> <clears throat> hopefully a remake, though. Just give me the keys, guys. Right. Whoever owns it, I don't know. I could write. We could write something up. Maybe we'll put that in the fucking pile or something like that. Remake the pit. Right. Um, but we do have another movie that deals with the kids in the hole. Uh, <laughs> and, and that's uh, our newer movie that Britney's going to be breaking down for us. Um, and that one is? The Hole in the Ground that came out in 2019. This is an Irish mm -hmm. horror film, which is pretty cool. The story goes, one night, Sarah's young son disappears into the woods behind their rural home. When he returns, he looks the same, but his behavior grows increasingly disturbing. Sarah begins to believe that the boy who returned may not be her son at all. <gasps> bum, bum, bum. <laughs> this uh, film was directed by Lee Cronin. This is actually his first feature film. Right. Which is kind of surprising to me because it's pretty fucking dope. Like, it's clean as fuck, so yeah, I'm, I'm very surprised job. that this is, like, first feature film. But he, I mean, supposedly he had a pretty, like, healthy-ish budget, mm -hmm. so. If you guys also remember, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, it's a it's an anthology called Min Minutes After Midnight. Mm -hmm. I think it's Minutes or Minutes Minute Past after, Midnight. Minute After Midnight, I believe. Minutes After Midnight, yeah. It was, like, it was an anthology with, like, a shit ton of fucking uh, stuff in there. And there's some actually pretty good stuff. I got it in one of the horror packs, actually. Nice. And he did one of those in there. He did. Um, so he's done all shorts before this and then two episodes of a TV show. So mm -hmm. the shorts he did were Wilbur and Anto, Through the Night, Billy and Chuck, and then Ghost Train was the short that he did four minutes after midnight. Right. And then he did two episodes of a TV so show called The Master Plan. It was also written by Lee Cronin and uh, Stephen Shields. He ha did... Zombie Bashers, Republic of Telly, and Mini Moguls, which is all television shows. Okay. Shauna Kerslake, who plays Sarah O'Neill, who's from Dollhouse, Dark Room, A Date for Mad Mary, and the TV series Can't Cope, Won't Cope, which is more recent. Uh, it also has James Quinn Markey, who plays Chris O'Neill, who was in the TV movie Mother's Day, and then the TV series Vikings, which is where I recognized him from because I've seen the episodes with him in it. Okay. I've seen the first like two seasons ish. I don't know. And there's another guy in there, and that's from uh, Game of Thrones. Yes, yeah. I'm getting to him next. Okay. <laughs> uh, it has James Cosmo, who plays Des Bradley, who was in Braveheart, Train Spotting, Urban Ghost Story, The Reckoning, Sons of Anarchy, and he is in Game of Motherfucking Thrones. Mm -hmm. That's who I reckon. I recognize him from that in Braveheart. Yeah. And Train Spotting, to be honest, but mostly Game of Thrones because. But he's been around for a while. Most recently. And I think it was like 2015. He's season. an established actor, yeah. Yeah, and he's doing a ton of shit still. Like, he has a bunch of shit in the works right now that he's, do that he's doing, which is great because I like him a lot. He's a handsome old man. Um, It also has Katie Outlin. Outlin? 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 Outlin. It's O-U-T-I-N-E-N. Outlin. Oh. <laughs> uh, who plays Noreen Brady. Um, who was in The Home for Dark Butterflies, Dark Crimes, and The Man Without a Past. 
It also has Simone Kirby, who plays Louise, who was in Hamlet, Season of the Witch, the one with Nicolas Cage. Okay. And the Peaky Blinders series. I've heard of that, yeah, Peaky Blinders. Last but not least, Steve Wall, who plays Rob, which is Louise's husband, he is also in Vikings. He's in another TV series called Moon Boy, and he was in Ghost Train. So the whole town is just made of Vikings. Pretty much. (laughs) Well, two. (laughs) Two Vikings. Yeah. So what did you think about this movie? Well, uh, this is the second time I've watched it, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, I ended up watching it once in South Carolina. I watched The Hole in the Ground. This is what, where I got the inspiration because I knew you would like this sort of thing. It just I just kind of know your taste now. Uh, but I don't know. The idea of a child turning evil is always an interesting one to me. And, you know, it's been explored in many different films like The Good Son, The Prodigy, The Omen, Pet Cemetery. Son. I mean, shit. It's just in a lot of stuff. But, you know, what would you do if the life you made suddenly turned on you? Right. You know, what would you do? Not to mention, what the fuck would you do if a child was slowly twisting your mind into a distrust for them on top of it? It's really kind of mind fuckery. And you couldn't quite prove it. Kind of like go crazy a little bit. You know, is it just a phase? Um, You know, what is it? But the the movie, I think, explores a lot of, uh, you know, often treaded trope of evil child sort of thing it's been done a lot of times but you know does this one do it differently enough to make it worth the watch you know was the kids acting strong enough to pull it off is it scary well for one like she mentioned it is an irish film and surprisingly this is not one of the only child stealing movies in the country (laughs) okay there's a lot of different movies i think um the hollow uh, reminded me this uh, slightly. There's another movie, uh, The Hollow Child, that just came out not too long ago. It's not from Ireland, but there are other movies because they have like these folklore legends that, you know, I'll go into a little in depth. I have mm-hmm. some trivia on. Awesome. Um, but the movie starts off kind of like, you know, with a mother taking her son home from school. They've moved away from some sort of dark past. They don't really get into it, but you kind of figure it out as you go. And on the way home, they almost hit a deranged woman who's just standing in the middle of the fucking road, murmuring to herself. And they even hit her with the side mirror, which I thought was kind of funny. But did they actually hit her with it or did it hit a tree? I think it hit her. Yeah, because it's laying right next to her. Oh, she would have been, like, fucked up, though. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? They were going really fast. It's like, I thought it hit a tree or something. And I won't spoil this for you guys. I'm just kind of giving you the the kind of the, the beginning fucking couple minutes, really. Um, but, you know, she's found muttering something under her breath, the old woman, but she can't really understand it. And you find out later that it's about something to do with her child that she, she had says, when like, she was younger. Yours. Yeah. But after a small argument later on, they go home, they have an argument, her child runs off into the woods, and they discover a big hole in the ground. And that's where all the fucking shit goes sideways, pretty much. But um it's it's one of those kind of smaller budget films, but done in such a, a very good way. Like, the acting is really good. It feels big budget. Yeah, like, the camera work is really done, well done. You know, there's a lot of really great shots in it that I really like. I felt like the, the acting really was what stood out to me the most in this film. Like, it did Everyone's great. Yeah, they're all really good. Like, I didn't feel awkward about any moment or laugh at anything, really. It just... It definitely pulls off what they intended to do, like 100%. Especially the kid going from sweet to creepy, you know, because he does. fantastic. Dude, that kid is does so good. He really does it well. And his mother, the, the actress, uh, Shauna, she actually really did a good job bouncing off of him. That's She's not an great. easy task. She's great, too. Everybody in this movie is good. Like every single person, even if they have a small character. I agree. so good. Like. It's incredible. Plus, I will say that the, uh, not just, you know, the acting, the camera work, all this other stuff, it's all like lined up perfectly. And, and I, another thing I really liked about it was that it, it had a, a really seriously awesome score. It really did. It is gripping. Like it is perfect. Like the way that they fucking do this, it just works so well with all the moving parts in the film. Yes. Um, it gives it that uneasy feeling the whole way through the fucking movie. And, you know, 
there is quite a few what the fuck moments throughout the film. So you're going to have some breadcrumbs that'll lead you to the end. So it's not just one of these slow burn movies that you can't watch. I think you can get into it enough, but where this movie, I think, lacks a little bit, and I don't want to take away from it, it just feels, like, familiar. You know what I mean? Right. But they do it so well that you, I have to give it some props for what it did, you know, because there's some genuinely pretty creepy moments in the film that, that kind of take you there. I don't want to express what those are, but, you know, there's not a lot of gore in this at all. Like, I don't think there's any, to be honest it's, with you. It's more of a... I don't remember any gore. There's not really, no. Um, mm. It's it's more of a dark imagery. Sure. Is kind of the idea and concept that they were going for with this. So, which I, I love shit like that. Plus, I mean, I think it's it's more of a thriller kind of horror movie, you know, with a few. It's a suspense movie. You know, it does have the horror element in there. Don't, don't take it wrong, because I know some people get really weird when you say thriller. They're like, oh, I don't want to, you know, fuck that. I don't want to, nah, yeah, I'm done. This is more like psychological thriller-esque. It is definitely. And that's, I mean, that's, that's. It's my bread and butter, and I, so def- I, and I definitely shit. think it's 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 got enough in it to make you interested all the way to the end. Yeah, like you it, know, it moves fast enough to where there's not really a point where you're just like, when the fuck am I? When are we going to move the story along? You know what sure. I mean? Like, I almost feel like it goes a little bit too quickly, right? To be honest, it's only it's barely even an hour and a half long. That's a good thing, but at the same time, I hate that because I always want more, and I wanted more time with that creepy ass child. Sure, and I, and I will say this, you know. I feel like it's a complete movie. I feel, I don't want to use the word derivative. I mean that it is kind of derivative. It's its own entity and it does what it does really well. Um, but because it feels a little borrowed and I've seen other movies like it, it kind of takes away of it. But if you put it up against the pile of the other ones, it's going to be one of the higher of the, in the pile. But because it feels a little familiar and it's like it's been done a little bit before, I would probably give this movie like a seven. You know, it's well acted, well shot, well told, and enough to keep you watching all the way to the end and maybe even come back to watch it again sometime. I think I could because there's some fucking moments in there. I was like, ooh, Mm -hmm. but it's not going to be the top of 2019 for me. But seven, I think, is fair. So, what about you? What did you think? Uh, I overall, overall, I mean, this is like an eight for me, probably like eight. Really? Out of 10. Okay. I really enjoyed it. Like, honestly, I enjoy all the visuals from it. Like, right, starting just right from the get go, when just the title sequence, like you come in, and then all of a sudden, the road that they're driving on is inverted. Okay. And it's like the hole in the ground, and it's just like in the music that goes along with it. The score is just fucking brilliant. Right. Beginning to end, it's the most fucking perfect music to go along with a movie. And right. I was. Blown and out of my fucking mind. The camera, the music, the acting all yeah, work together like, really well. It's a really good the, movie. The fucking cinematography, the score, the acting, everything about it feels just so amazing. And that's why I was saying that it's hard for me to believe this is his first feature film. Because like everyone involved in this just did phenomenal. Yeah. You know, this feels like seasoned professionals that have been doing this for 25 fucking years yeah. each that worked on this movie to make this movie. And... You know, to me, I'm like, go fucking Ireland. This is badass. <laughs> like, they and they take like uh, Irish folklore and put a like put a spin on it. You know, and it's it's really cool. Like this concept with the kid, an evil kid or kid being you know taken over, possessed, whatever, is like beating a fucking dead horse. Like this is a concept that's been done a million fucking times. It's almost almost always done the same exact way, but they breathe a little bit of fresh air into this one. I think and the acting makes it stand out more. The acting yeah. does make it stand out more. So I think like, they really locked out with that kid. They did, and that kid, this kid's gonna go if he sticks with this, which I hope he does. He's gonna go on and do some amazing shit. Yeah, because he's. Young, believable too. I and was like really kind of like fantastic. It's like, don't you look at me, motherfucker. He reminds me a lot of the kid from um, the Sixth Sense. Yes, that's what I thought. I he thought looks he like looks him in the eyes. Like yeah, it totally. was the craziest shit. I was I like, totally Bleh. agree. And I, yeah. It sounds so bad because I can't remember his name, like the actor's name to save my life right now. But he reminds me so much of him. And like the the first like ten minutes. Of the movie with him, I'm just like, holy <laughs> balls. This is just like the kid from The Sixth Sense. It's nuts. It's just like, you know, 25 years later or whatever. It's like the same child. It's the craziest shit ever. Yeah. I think it's a really good movie. It's definitely up to taste, though, if you're if you're more forgiving of something that has been done sort of uh, enough. It, I, that's why I feel like seven to me is about appropriate. Yeah. Like, if I gave it an eight, it would be saying, I don't know. Like, I don't, I just... 
I'm like, I'd give it an eight because I'm going to watch it again. It's definitely in the eights I, for acting, eight or nines yeah, at least. I appreciate the fact of that they did breathe some life into an idea that's been done so many times, but then it also takes kind of kind of an original twist towards the end. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It definitely does like some it go- weird shit. It goes a weird direction that you don't really anticipate it to go, mm-hmm. and I was happy and very pleasantly surprised with the last like 10 minutes of this movie i would highly recommend you guys watch the hollow h-a-l-l-o-w uh if you can i, I believe it was up on shutter or netflix I or one of these places i think it was on netflix i really want to watch that now after seeing this movie because i i think that one beats it by a little bit yeah yeah just a little bit but if you're a fan of that you might want to check it out i don't think the trailer does this movie any justice either by the way i'm going to point that out I, it does, but it doesn't. Like you feel like it's one of those trailers where you're getting all the best parts mm-hmm. in the trailer. And I this, forgot what the trailer and was this like. This movie is like, nope, it goes way off in this other direction, and it gets even cooler. Yeah, like they do. They do show some of the really creepy, like really cool moments in in the trailer, like that are from the movie. But it okay. kind of makes me a little pissy that they do that. But well, they, sometimes they do these they fast do images, something to like hook you in, right? But like one of the creepiest scenes in particular is. In the whole trailer. Right. And I'm okay. like, God, why? You know, like, why the fuck do you do that? Like, cut a little bit. Like, all we needed was the hand and the spider. That was good enough. Yeah. To keep going, you know? But there was, like, I I don't know. I kind of hate movies with creepy kids because I can overpower a child. Right. So I was thinking about you, too. It like, doesn't oh. bother me. Like, it just, it doesn't, you know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't scare me. But if you had a child, if it was your child, it would. I'd kick it down the stairs. Not if it was your child. I don't know. I don't. This is why you I don't would be want trying kids. to fight. You would be trying to lie to yourself that it's all in your you head this, because you love your child. But the main reason why I don't want kids is because I can't form that kind of connection <laughs> to something. So well, when you would, if you did, I love you the would shit out of mouse. Connection. And if he did this shit, I kick him down the stairs. A mother's love is something that's completely different. Yeah. I, I can only imagine. I don't foresee myself being capable of that kind of love, which is why. I won't have a child. Yeah. I have patience. Because she'd kick it down the fucking stairs. I'd kick stairs. it down the fucking stairs. <laughs> like, if my kids, the tiniest little ounce of Hide your kids. Hide your wife. I'm kicking it down the fucking stairs. Like, I'll stab it with a knife. I don't give a shit. Like, <laughs> my kid gets creepy and possessed, I'm going to kill it. Like, I'm not fucking around. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> like, man. Nope. I, I, it never ends too hey, well when least, they do that, even in the at old At least man, I or... can admit to myself that, like, I'm that not having kids kid? because I can't love one. So, <laughs> <laughs> there's that. Well, did they I have any? Can't. So um, you so, said an eight. I said a seven. So did they have any trivia or anything? Uh, took a little bit from some of the interviews that I read and watched with um, the director, Lee Cronin. And specifically in one part, he was asked how the younger actor, James, mm-hmm. who plays um, Chris, how he was able to get him on board with doing some of the scarier scenes. Okay. Because he's so young. And I'm like, has this guy never seen Vikings? Because... They have a ton of them? Nothing about that. It's not really scary, but nothing about that show is, like, it's kind of fucked up. So, I don't know. But he said that James actually just really loved taking part in all the scarier moments in the film. He said he didn't think that he was daunted by filming any of them. Right. Which is something you have to be really careful of with kids. Yeah. Working in movies and stuff like this is that they're going to take this home with them and they're going to have night terrors and nightmares and they're going to be all fucked up and turn into us. Mm-hmm. So... <laughs> Um, he said that he knew what his job was and that he was so well prepared for everything all the time. Right. Um, he has this great ability to turn on the sinister when it's required and then to just be the sweetest young lad in the world. I think the thing he feared the most was having to eat pasta, which he hated, <laughs> and he had to eat a lot of it on camera, but he soldiered on like the true pro that he is. And I'm like, really? Of all the things he had to do, it was eating pasta. Yeah. I, I heard with him. I heard that he had a lot of fun doing a lot of the scenes in it. Which, and, and I, he, I almost feel like he can tell. You know what I mean? Well, he was actually, this is what I heard also. I mean, just to add to what you're saying, uh, is that, that James, the, the kid who plays Chris in the movie, was picked from about 80 different kids. Mm-hmm. And they whittled it down to about two kids before he was actually picked. But he had the best chemistry because they did some chemistry tests, you know. Yeah, not, I don't mean the... like fucking goddamn fucking 
acid and fucking magnesium and yeah, shit. No, I'm talking about fucking the, acting chemistry. The chick and him to see right. who if they bounce well off each other. And they also had to explain to him, and they said that it was very important for him to be very honest with the child about the scenes that he was doing, and then that, you know, just to be honest with him. And they said that he was just super smart and real talent, so he just soaked it up and just had fun. Mm-hmm. So... Which it feels like. I f- almost feel like he did. I think movies end up feeling differently mm-hmm. at the end of the day if the people that worked on them actually thoroughly enjoyed the job they were doing. Mm-hmm. So this film was actually filmed in Dublin, Kildare, and Wicklow, and it only took about 24 days Oh, okay. for them to bad. film it. And Lee Cronin said that there's no such thing as having enough time on a film shoot. But the producers and the financiers for this movie really did support him and gave him as much time as they possibly could. So they were able to do this, stretch this essentially to 24 days to shoot. Nice. Um, they probably wanted it less. Over three different areas. Is, right. It's a lot of money. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. And yeah. there's a lot that went into this too. So, I mean, there's a lot of CGI work in it, but it's clean CGI work too, which is something that I appreciated. And it's, it's funny not too, really because like some of the choppy. reviews I saw too were complaining about the CGI. I'm like, People it's not even that fucking bad. so annoying with that shit. Yeah. Like, it's not as obvious. Like, I didn't, it do, I don't notice it as much. Yeah, I didn't notice it that bad. And that's I, what I like, because I hate when I can really fucking tell and that drives me yeah, crazy. Yeah, like, if it's way obvious, then I get offended. But when right. it's like, they did a decent job, I'm okay with it. I'm exactly. like, whatever. And this is fine. Like, it's actually pretty, it along. pretty clean right cgi work and so i was like i didn't even take notice of the fact that they used it it's like obviously they do yeah. it's like apparently the whole, everything with the pit is all cgi yeah or the hole is all cgi and i'm like i didn't even think that that would be cgi you yeah they did a I mean? good job it's smooth well they kind of put out like a filter over the whole movie so it had this like green yeah it was cool gray hue kind of over it or something mm-hmm. so i liked it i yeah. love shit that's filmed like that it's so pretty he also noted that he had a few nods to The Shining. Oh, okay. In the movie, which the only thing that I could attribute back to it. The red rum thing. No, it was like the wallpaper made me think of The Shining. And they, they affirmed this too in hit one of his other interviews that he mentioned really? it was the wallpaper. And I was like. I didn't make that connection. Yeah, like that's to me, I was like. I would just think it would be the kid. That's a bigger thing. He's like, Danny. So it's like, I, I get that. Right, yeah. But he talks more about like, you know, one of the people interviewing him was like, the wallpaper is like your thing to The Shining or whatever, right? And he's like, yeah, that's one of the major things. And I was like, okay, I guess I can see that. Yeah. He also stated that he was heavily impacted by The Shining at the age of eight years old. Was when he first saw it. Okay. Well, a lot um, of people were, yeah. That. Yeah. And he stated that he also looked very heavily towards Rosemary's Baby and Repulsion as they are strong female point of view films and they highlight a psychological point of view of being trapped alone right. with no one that you can trust. Right. Which is like the polar theme, essentially. Which is so crazy because movie. Rosemary's Baby's movie is so good too. And like, I feel so dirty watching it because of all the Roman Polanski bullshit that I happened. Know. Like, it's so terrible. Like, I almost feel like it's, 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 it's not even, it doesn't even belong to Roman Polanski anymore. Right. Like, it, it really is just, it's, it's now everybody else's. Yeah. There's like a handful so, of Polanski movies that I really love. At least love I, that's what I, I tell myself. I know. So I don't it feel like a dirty sleep creep. better at night. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I, did, I thought that was interesting, especially that he notes to both of those movies. And it's, it's fun because in other interviews he talks to about how he's shown movies to his nieces. Yeah. He showed them Nightmare on Elm Street and The Shining. It's kind of heavy for and a kid. And they thought Nightmare on Elm Street was ridiculous. Mm, makes sense. And stupid. They thought The Shining was terrifying. Okay. So The Shining was scary. Nightmare on Elm Street was stupid. Silly. And silly. And I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> some of the, I heard some of the inspiration, if you don't mind me jumping in. Uh, the director kind of wanted to lean into the folklore mm-hmm. of Ireland, you know, because it's really rich with a lot of folklore. And he was saying, you know, like one of the greatest things about the folklore out there is that everybody has a different version. So yeah. this movie, in a lot of ways, was kind of borrowing from the changeling uh, folklore, which is about you know, there's so many different types of versions of it uh, in Europe in general, let alone in Ireland. Um, so I did a little research on this just based on what the ch- a changeling is. 
Uh, And a changeling is a creature found in folk religion throughout Europe. A changeling was believed to be a a fairy child that had been left in place of a human child stolen by the fairies. Uh, Fairies are huge in Ireland, by the way, guys. Like, this is the place. In in Scotland and Ireland, I believe it's huge. Um, But the theme of the the swap child is common in medieval literature and modernly reflects concern over infants thought to be afflicted with an unexplainable disease, disorder, or some sort of developmental disability. Um, in Irish legend, a fairy child may appear sickly and won't grow in size like a normal child and may have notable physical characteristics such as a beard or long teeth. And they may also display intelligence far beyond their apparent years, as well as possess an uncanny insight to things that kids wouldn't have insight to. Uh, they said that a common way that a changeling could identify itself is through displaying unusual behavior when it thinks it's alone, which the kid does in the movie. And by the way, we're yeah. going to this. This is kind of spoilerific area. So I don't want to like uh, if you guys haven't, you know, listened to the trivia yet or haven't seen the movie, I would highly urge you to go watch the movie first. It's actually really good. Come back and listen to this at any point. Um, but no, the kid does that in the movie. He kind of like does weird, unusual behavior when it thinks it's alone and it's like jumping about dancing or playing an instrument. Um, but the, the last example is the only thing I found in Irish and, and like a Scottish legend. So, um, but I thought it was interesting. And he also said that one of the inspirations for this movie was that he was inspired by a man who was in his house just sitting in his chair watching TV and suddenly a sinkhole opened up under his house, like a small one. And like he wasn't able to get out. Like he died, I guess. I'm they didn't really explain. But he said that he was like while he was actually in the middle of writing a story about a mother who doesn't trust her son, like while he was trying to come up with an idea, he saw that and then sort of added it in there and just kind of put them together to make the movie. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Did you have anything else? Mm Mm-mm. No? Um I wanted to mention a few little things that I found also. Shauna, who plays the mom in this movie, she'd never done a horror film before. And um, she was really intrigued with the idea of doing a horror movie because she she likes horror, but she's never she's like kind of scared of her own imagination. She like gets weirded out by stuff. Um, So she says she would be more than willing to do more. But at first, the director, Lee, was not actually sold on her. And the producer had to convince him. He was like, watch this. And trust me, she'll be it. Originally, the director thought that she was a little too, like, kind of like a party girl image more than she was a motherly image, like a timid mom that she needs to be in this movie. You know what I mean? So he wasn't really sold on her. But when he watched that, that quickly changed and they signed her up like immediately. So she says she's really into the whole horror resurgence yeah, and that she's really she really likes it. Um, Which, by the way, the time she buries her head in the movie, like they bury her head. The kid does. She really did that. She had like a respirator underneath in the ground that she was breathing into so it wasn't that bad and uh they did about two or three takes she was like i was nothing she was like i was already prepped for it i knew what i was doing yeah she was like it was no big deal so the only other thing that i could think of uh is that they did this movie when before they made this movie and they actually went out and filmed it they did they set up cardboard boxes all over the place to practice like how they were going to act and stuff so that when they came time to film, they would all be ready, especially because of the kid and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. They like used a bunch of cardboard boxes to do it up. So I don't know, but that's, that's all I have. Did you have any scenes that you enjoyed that stuck out to you? Oh yeah. There's quite a few. I won't go over all of them because we're short on time here. Originally just the whole fact of where the crazy lady uh, banged her head against the she's window and dope. stuff. She was a really good actor. I thought she's th- gonna get picked up to be a fucking weird old lady in horror. In every movie from now, now, from here on, on out, she's fucking good. I thought it was, I just want to mention that I really enjoyed that. Just a little thing, but I think the first um, thing that kind of like tripped me out a little bit is when they find her. That was awesome. Buried. Awesome. Her head buried in the ground and her ass was like kind of up. Well, she was just kind of laying there, and like crows are like picking at her flesh and eating it. They, which, you know, I thought it was pretty cool. It kind of reminded me, huh? (laughs) It's amazing. I thought it was so beautiful. Yeah. It sounds weird to say, but that's like, (laughs) 
it's a cool fucking visual. And I was like, I haven't seen that done before. Dude, you know how much time I, sp- I spent like an hour trying to search for any kind of folklore with anything about people yeah. sticking their heads Head in, in the, the thing. Yeah. And all I kept coming across is like ostrich Ostriches. shit. <laughs> and I'm like, does an ostrich actually stick its head in the fucking dirt? And I'm like, okay, fuck this shit. But um, um, it did remind me of a movie that came out on Netflix last year called Cargo, uh, which... Isn't that a... Like, um, it was like a zombie movie where they get this outbreak yeah. where they like they start pussing from the mouth. Yeah. Okay. And like they try to cover their heads. They kind of dig a hole and stick their heads in the ground. And that's immediately what I thought of. And I was like, okay, so there's got to be some sort of interesting things. But these aren't zombies. So I couldn't really find anything on it. So I'm not entirely sure why they added it. Maybe it's just to be weird or be connected to the earth for those the folklore that they're making up, maybe. Because he did say he kind of made it his own. Yeah, so, I don't know, but it was cool. That I thought, I just thought that was cool, like uh, them burying their head, and I thought it was just an, an extra thing that kind of made you go, "Okay, what the fuck is going yeah, on?" Yeah, created this dope fucking visual. And then when he does it to his mom later in the movie, I'm like, Ugh. "Yeah, that was kind of yeah, so cool." Then also he's like seven, right, or whatever. However, old I don't know he how is. old he is. Like, how well can he actually bury a fucking adult? Right. Well, well, he's like super strength because remember get super crazy strength. Right. The, what's the first scene that you saw to him? Uh, he kind of loses his shit a little bit. Yeah, and he shoves the table across the room. Right. Which was cool. That was it's like I was big, like, sturdy Whoa. wood table, and he just shoves it ac- across the room at his mom, and I'm like, damn. That's kind of like the turning point in the film. I think it's like kind of the uh, it is the third point. act essentially. Yeah. So because like I was like, okay, girl, you're right. Like some ain't right. Yeah. <laughs> It's not your kid. You know yeah, I mean? definitely. Any suspicions you you might have had are justified at this point. Go ahead and kill it. Whatever you want, set it on fire. Take it I down guess. the stairs. <laughs> set it on fire. We believe you, <laughs> but fuck it up, dude. Did it freaking creep you out a little bit? Just the way he would say, "Mommy, yes, mommy. I'm sorry, mommy." Yes. Oh, uh, like Ugh. I don't like mommy. Like well, he says, "Mommy," I think he's mm-hmm. like, "Mommy, sorry, mommy, mommy." I'm like, "Ow!" But he says it so like sweet. It's angelic, sweet, but it's but also, also fucked up. The, almost the way he says it is so like, not, I don't want to say condescending, but like there's something about how he says it that is just like he says it too much as if somebody who was trying to convince their mom that he's not their child yeah. or you know what I mean? That they, that he is his child or child. Right. So I don't know. Overkill. It just kind of freaks me out a little bit. It's dope. Yeah. Do you have a scene, uh, another scene or I have one. Um, I love when she hears him. In his room. Right. That's the, the spider scene. Is so scene. cool, which yeah. they show in the whole trailer. And it's annoying as fuck. But She's like peering under the door looking. The, yeah, but what they don't show in the trailer is the lead up and then out from that. Which, right. Oh, That was pretty creepy. So good. So she hears him like playing or doing something. Talking like there's music or, or whatever. Or yeah, he's singing. He's like humming or something. And so she... She starts to kind of like sneak towards the bedroom and the door's shut. The door's closed, so she looks through the peephole for. Or no, the she, looks she looks under the through floor. The, no, she looks through the keyhole. Oh. And doesn't see anything. So then she gets down and she looks underneath the door and she sees this spider crawling across the floor, which would normally not mean anything. But then all of a sudden she sees her kid's hand kind of acting like a spider dancing right. behind him. Yeah. And then it stops and then the kid grabs the spider really quick. And then crawls on all ha- on all fours, weirdly, and disappears. And she's like, what the fuck? Because her kid's terrified of spiders. So this is like the definitive moment where she like really realizes that's, a, right. that's not her fucking son. So she gets up and looks through the keyhole again. And now she sees where he climbs up on the other side of his bed. And he looks all fucking weird. I don't know. Everything He's about him is shaky. Just weird and shaky. And then yeah. she he turns to the side and you can see he's eating the spider. And and it's all like trying to get trying out to of his mouth. Yeah, it's trying to run away or whatever. And then it's like he hears her or something and she starts to back away. And then he's like, Mommy. And she fucking takes off. And yeah, like, but you hear it crunching in his mouth yeah, and shit. But and I'm like, Ew, get it out of your fucking mouth, you weirdo. I know, Mouse was not having <laughs> that shit. He hates spiders. Oh, God, it gives me chills just thinking yeah, about it. Mouse is like gross. So then she runs away from him, right? And she's like, st- like laying up against the wall in her bedroom. And he's, like, calling out for her. Like, Mommy. She's like, yes. She's like, what are you doing? I'm in bed. And then all of a sudden, out of the, like, side, he just appears. Right. And it's, like, it's 
um, blurry. Like, he's blurred, so he just kind of appears in the background, and she's fucking terrified, and how she plays that scene is so good. Like, and she's just trying to be like, please don't fucking come in here. Please don't fucking come in here. Right, yeah. she's not in bed. She was spying on him, and she doesn't want him to know that she was spying on him, because now she's like, oh, fuck, this definitely isn't my kid. But yeah, she was like, "Don't murder me!" Pretty fucking much, fantastic. Like, yeah, it was so cool. Like the build up, and then the build, like, and then it continues to be built up after that. But yeah, it's just disgusting and weird and just like unsettling all together. Like it was great. I love how he chain just, of like, events there zooms into the fucking scene on the side. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, there's this part. Another, Kill it. another part that I really like is when she goes over and talks to the old man who's the husband of the woman who was a strain or like in the middle of the street for some goddamn reason and like muttering shit who also got her head buried and found dead. He, he, she goes to talk to that guy because she actually went to the funeral uh, to, to honor her in a way because she met him on the road or something like that previously. So she goes to talk to him and she set up a camera in the kid's room and she's like video taping the kid singing and being weird in his room and notices that it's not her kid. And then this is the proof. And then she goes home in a panic because the guy like throws the camera down because his child, because the fucking the crazy woman who died and was had her head buried killed her own child by running it over with a car. And everybody in the town thought she was either, and it was an, either an accident or she was a murderer. Mm-hmm. And everybody thought she was crazy because she just lost it after that regardless. And so like I, the old man couldn't deal with it. And so she goes home and is like, Hey, do you want to, are you hungry? I'm going to make you some food. And she takes all of her medicine to knock him the fuck out and mix it in her food in his food. And he starts eating it. And then he's sitting on the couch laughing about something on TV, which is really eerie uh, as he's laughing all fake. And then she's like, Hey, you know, what we haven't done in a while. Cause they had this game where they would count down from, five to one and then they would make ugly faces at each other and whoever had the most ugly face got to go like didn't have to do what they were supposed to do and so they had this little game with each other and like she's like five and he doesn't say anything because they would count it down together and then she's like you're not my son over and over and over again and she tries to she tries to play this game with him but She's like, he starts to get up and slowly approaches her. And while she's saying, you're not my son over and over and over, he starts to fake cry and chucks her across the fucking room and then fucking throws her back across the other, like across the kitchen table. And it's like, damn, son, <laughs> like, it's like, damn, Wheaties are fucking kicking some ass right now, man. Yeah. It was fucking good, though, I, and I liked it because he, like, drags her out by her hair, her hair and then tries to bury her head there, right there. That was that scene. He so. does bury her. He completely buries her head, and then he passes out because then all the medicine has hit him. Right. So he passes out next to her outside. And, and then there's, like, a scuffle after that, right? Because she, yes. she, she takes him down to the basement, and she's going to, she, like, tie him up or something. She runs back into the house. Doesn't she just ditch him out there? She goes down to the basement, I think, and she's going to tie him up or something like that. And he comes to and then he attacks Holy her. Shit. Yeah, he totally attacks her. It was a fucking badass, too. And it's like screeching at him well, and he, shit. She, Because she overpowers him and slams him into the wall. Right. Then, she, well, she holds the mirror up to his face first. Yeah. Well, she, that's how he wakes up. Right. And she finds out he's the changeling and then he's this weird creature thing. And then he attacks her. She slams him into the wall. He lays back. He falls down on the ground and starts screeching, like high pitched, fucking horrible. Yeah, he bangs it. She bangs his head on the beam or something. Yeah, real hard. So <laughs> she, she fucking up. broke it, basically. <laughs> so then she locks it up, locks him up in the basement, and she fucking takes off into the woods. Right. And this is where I was like, where's this going to go? You know what I mean? Right. Like, I'm like, what do we do now? Bitch fucking Jumps launches herself sinkhole. down to the sinkhole, comes out the other side. And then, holy fucking claustrophobia, Ew, Batman. Yeah. I was so uncomfortable for this next, like, ten minutes of this movie. Fuck. But- You see skulls everywhere and, yeah, like, these weird creatures. Yeah, but the payoff is so good. It's so good. Because she gets into- She finds her son. Right. Who's- You know, and this is the end of the movie, guys, so we're going to spoil it. So if you don't yeah. want to listen, then stop. So she finds her son. He's all tied up with a bunch of vines and shit. Mm-hmm. She un- Unbar- like you know, untangles, untangles him. him, and then she's trying to drag him out, and then all of a sudden, these weird ass little alien creature without eyes, without eyes, yeah, no, you know, oh, they're just basically they're Featureless, like basically. they're like little mini sinkholes. They're like they look like 
kind of I am of. I am Groot. Yeah, but like weird. without faces they're and like just a big hole in their mouth. Nature like wooden dirt weird things i don't know they're i don't know how to describe them but they're creepy we don't have to explain the end entirely but but that was so she rescues him basically the, oh and the, the part that sticks with me though the most from that is when she's getting she's almost out and the creature grabs onto her arm right and she bashes the arm with whatever she has in her fucking hand. And then she stops and she looks. And it's it gives me chills, like, just thinking about it. Because when I watched it, I was like, ew. It just looks. Ew. Like, but she looks at it and it's her. Right. Looking back at her, just dead-eyed and clean. Like, it's all clean because it just turned into her. And she's all fucking dirty and bloody because her kid tried to kill her and bury right, her. Right, yeah. But it's the fucking most unnerving expression on her yeah. face, staring back at her and her big eyes just and like, just stoic face. She has big eyes, big lips. Like she has all these like really defined features that are really, and she's fucking creepy looking, man. Like it, just how she's staring back. I'm like, I'm still like, so I intense. have chills. Yeah. Like I was so, that was the biggest part of the movie that I was like, Duh. No, yeah. no, like that made me go no out loud. I was like, <laughs> I have to fucking lutely not. Bad change. And then she just fucking punches it like in the fucking head or whatever. They don't just, say. They don't. Say no, they oh, just. Yeah. They, it cuts out, but you can see she goes to hit it, and I'm like, you, you know what I liked about that actor when she goes back, she's like carrying her half dead son because clearly he hasn't eaten or done anything for however long, mm -hmm. and you assume everything's fine, but then you hear the kid in the background that she locked in the basement, the changeling, and it's like, please, mommy. Please. Yeah, and then he's still fucking like she, she fucking torches the house and like so great. I'm sorry, but they would find a body in the basement at some point and then you would be uh Trouble. accused of some child murder. Yeah. And maybe not your own. Some uh, child murder. But but the thing I really liked about it is at the very end is when, okay, so like the first two times I, at least two times I saw, right? First time I was thinking to myself, like, well, why are they trying to play it off? Like, like she doesn't know if he's real or not. But then if you think about it and like how she had to try to convince herself fighting tooth and nail that her child was real and it was her real child over and over and over and over again that she had to try to convince herself that it was not him, that she now questions if it really is him at times. So it's like she takes pictures and his face is a little blurry and she's got mirrors everywhere because mirrors let you know if they're a changeling it's or mirror, not. Mirrors show the true self. But you could tell like it really had an emotional impact on her. Oh, it fucks her up. She turns into that crazy old lady. Right. But I was kind of expecting it to go somewhere dark after that somehow. Like, I don't know why. Like but he like, was still a changeling in the taxa or something. Well, shit. like I, cool. they didn't really show they well before they showed the kid, you just see her. So I was like, what if that changeling was the changeling or her going because it shows her in college and she's studying or something. Yeah, and... what if she didn't actually overcome the changeling that took her in the sinkhole? Right, like something happened. I don't know. Like I, I just didn't know. I don't think the sink. I don't think the changeling is going to go to college though. Yeah, like, I know. The changeling's just well, no, wreak because on its town. <laughs> hey, the little kid Christopher that went to school. Like he didn't. He was scared he to go to school. And yeah, did he the made friends. Yeah, he made friends. Yeah, that's true. But this is all a clever ploy to try and kill his mom. So. Right. But it's just, it kind of tries to leave this lingering Ugh, Her feel. fucking face is still stuck with me, like in the scene. That look, yeah, it's Man. pretty freaky. Well, I th I think, guys, if I think we've um, pretty, pretty much ex explained it all to you, so it sucks if you listen to this far, but uh, I don't know, I, I enjoyed it. I definitely wouldn't mind watching this one again. I wouldn't be, it wouldn't be something that I would watch every one or two years or anything no, like that. I'll watch it again for sure, though, because sure, I really yeah. liked it. Like it's, if it's worth on, the $7 I it, paid to rent it. Who knows, it'll <laughs> probably be on Netflix, but I say support it because it's a decent movie. Yeah, uh, I think it it's was, up on all of the VOD it's, services. It's one of those that I don't, I'm not upset about the fact that I spent like $7 to rent it. Right. I'm like, I'm cool with that. It, it was, was pretty good. good, yeah. But yeah, other than that, do you have anything else to say about? Just watch it. I Just liked watch it. it. So next week, guys, we're going to be watching Us oh, and doing a full talk about that. We're going to do a spoiler-free review first, and then we'll get into our spoilers and why we liked it and stuff that stood out. Why or why we didn't like it, I guess, you know, because we don't know yet. Excited. But South by Southwest happened. They showed an early uh, thing of it. And people have just been going mad about it. Um, I know some people have some, you know, feelings about Get Out and whether or not they like it. They thought it was kind of an average film and everybody overhyped it. A lot of people are saying that this solidifies that he's actually more than a one trick pony. And I'm so, 
And I'm just stoked. The trailer was so good. So I'm like, don't fuck with me, Jordan Peele. Right. Don't fuck with me. I'm but excited. We'll be uh, checking it out in the theater and uh, reporting back to you guys. I don't know who else might join us, if, if anybody at all. I know Christina will watch it with me, but I don't know if she'll do the episode with us. Hope you're looking forward to that. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode. We will be back next week. And uh, as always, stay weird, monsters. Stay weird, monsters.